Welcome to Global Matters with Solange Warner. The purpose of our show is to promote international trade, cultural and humanitarian exchange worldwide. In today's show, we will have the Consul of the Kingdom of Denmark, Christopher Smith, Juanita Bates, the CEO and President of Anushka Healthcare Group, and Flamingo Royal, a band from Georgia College State University supporting human trafficking awareness. Stay with us and we will be right back. I am honored to introduce you to the Consul of Denmark, Christopher Smith. Consul, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Absolutely. Last year, Georgia exported over $28 billion, the most ever exported in one year for our state. Please tell us how Georgia has accomplished this success and why this means more jobs for our state. Well, I think like any championship season, it's about teamwork. And the Georgia Department of Economic Development does a fantastic job of Kathy Falls and her crew over there promoting Georgia as do Georgia's offices all over the globe. Also, it has to do with our connectivity to the world, with Atlanta growing at exponential rates internationally, uh, Delta with these direct flights all over. It's an easy place to do business, plus awareness. Companies now are putting global as part of their business plan. That's right. Um, tell us, I, I know that um, Canada, China, and Mexico are the top destinations for exporting for our state. Mm -hmm. please, please tell us about the new trends in exporting. For instance, industries and countries that they are taking um, uh, a special place for Georgia uh, since last year. Well, the wonderful thing about Georgia's export markets is they seem to be really balanced. When you look at Asia, Europe, and North America, that's about 75% of Georgia's export markets. Then there are very uh, other important ones, such as the Caribbean, Africa, and many others that are coming up there. And Georgia hasn't maximized their footprint yet. There's still a lot of room to grow. Now, some of the trends, you're talking about a green tech. I'll give you an example. Maga Solar, which is a German-owned company, has a solar cell factory in Dublin, Georgia. They've just brought on 300 jobs. Many, many clean tech options there from all over the world are coming to Georgia. Automotive, if you look over at West Point, we've got the Kia plant from Korea. And then close, close to home, but not quite in Georgia, is Volkswagen coming up the road in Chattanooga, and that'll benefit our state as well. That's excellent. Um, I know as the Consul of Denmark, of course, uh, you're very interested in the Baltic uh, countries. Tell us a little bit more about that area and why is that meaningful for exporting uh, for our state? Well, when you look at the countries, when I talk about Baltics, I'm talking about countries that have ports on the Baltic, Germany, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Poland, and of course Russia over there by St. Petersburg. And then you got Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia in the mix as well. Uh, and I find it very interesting that in all of those countries except for Germany, Georgia ranks uh, seventh or higher in among the U.S. states in exports. We're number two to Poland. Uh, we're number seven to Denmark. Uh, we think we're fourth uh, when we look at the Lithuania and Latvia somewhere. And so I like to bring that up because, yes, I do represent Denmark, which is the gateway to the Baltics. And Denmark is a huge shipping nation. Uh, Maersk Port, uh, Maersk Shipping, excuse me, is the number one customer of the Georgia Ports Authority. And Danish shipping firms uh, roughly have about 10% of the world market. And they have a particular uh, area of expertise there. So that's an area, when you look at Russia, 183 million in exports to Russia last year, that's just the tip of the iceberg which that can be accomplished. So there's a lot of room to grow there. Absolutely. Uh, well, in, in being that said, please tell us about um, the Council of Denmark and the international uh, trade office that you'll have here in Atlanta, which I know uh, you do excellent job with bringing companies from Denmark. Well, yes, the Trade Council of Denmark with the Danish Trade Commissioner here in Atlanta is an engine for growth. They actually have an accelerator there and Mr. Jan Sauer and his staff are bringing interesting companies in here all the time. They tend to be very good companies that have high paying jobs for Americans. Uh, many of them are software companies, many of them are green tech companies, 
it really runs the gamut because Denmark has such a diversified uh, economy. But what this program allows them to do, it allows them to get into the market quickly and it allows them to take an office in the Danish Trade Council's office right here in Buckhead in Atlanta. They can run out there and start uh, getting into the market and there's a Danish American Chamber of Commerce and community there that helps them get going. So it's been a huge success story. Well, uh, you know, I think it would be very important uh, to tell our viewers how business here locally can become part of the networking that the uh, Danish uh, consulate and also the International Trade Office um, has. I know that there are uh, law firms and perhaps marketing companies and, and mm -hmm. others, such as accounting, that they could become good source of information and perhaps uh, uh, clients uh, mm -hmm. for, for the Danish companies and vice versa. So how these local companies can become involved with the Danish consulate and the Danish companies? Sure. Well, there are many ways they can do that. One, travel to Denmark, and I'll have to give a plug for my friends at Delta because there is a direct flight from June to August, a lovely time of year to go to Copenhagen and to Jutland and to Udense and the other parts of Denmark. You can take a cruise over there as well. Uh, but uh, we have kind of two arms. We have uh, the Danish Trade Council here, and then we have Invest Denmark, which is based out of New York for American companies wishing to do direct investment there. But the Danish American Chamber of Commerce is a way people can get involved. Uh, they're on the web. They're very active. Uh, and I would say taking it even broader than Denmark, uh, the World Chamber of Commerce and all the bilaterals here, there are so many resources where people can you know, kind of get their feet wet and find out what's going on internationally so they can get off the bench and get in the game, so to speak. Yeah, that is true. I see many companies that they come to the World Chamber of Commerce and they are looking specifically for leads, possible clients from international uh, markets to see how they can offer their services. And that's why it's so important for us uh, as the international business community to create this link between mm -hmm. these international companies looking to uh, perhaps open a branch here in Georgia or other states mm -hmm. in the South and, and also uh, offer the services for, for these companies that they are excellent and that they can provide excellent service for the international companies. Yeah, I agree with you and I think basically what I tell anyone interested in international business is thankfully, you know, we've got the internet, we've got all this wonderful telecommunications technology today, but there's never any replacement for personal relationships knowing people one-on-one. -on -one. And so that's something that has to be built. And the wonderful thing about an international situation is when people are coming here to Atlanta from Denmark or Chile or whatever, uh, they're open and they're, they want to meet new people. It makes things easy. And uh, invest a little time, uh, do a little homework, and, and, and you know do a little hard work, and things will pay off for people. Thank you so much for that information. When we get back, I will ask the Consul of Denmark more information about the consulate and about uh, his professional um, expertise as an attorney with uh, clients um, in, in international markets and also here locally. Thank you so much. We'll be right back.
Council of Denmark. Besides being the Council of Denmark and an advocate of international trade, you are a prominent attorney with international and local clients. Please tell us more about your expertise and, and then I will ask you how that interacts with the consular's uh, role as well. Happy to do so. Well, as you know, we have 67 countries with consuls here in, in Georgia. Now, about oh, close to 30 of them are career consuls. The rest of us have our day job, as we say, and, and many of us are from different professions, and I am a full-time practicing attorney and have been for close to 20 years here in Georgia. And I'm very fortunate because my practice is very diverse. We do anything from representing 18-wheeler uh, injury victims of people who've been in bad car wrecks uh, to representing multinational companies, uh, either anywhere from the defense contracting area uh, to Danish fashion to, you know, different companies. So really, I sometimes tell people that I represent everyone from a prince to a pauper, and I guess I represent uh, a kingdom that's true. So I have a, a very interesting practice. A lot of it is business-oriented. Several of my clients are, of course, organically grown here, you know, American companies. Uh, many of them are from, from abroad. And that is what's nice with technology today. Uh, before I left here, I was shooting over a contract to Europe. And uh, when I get back, I'll be working on a, a local matter. So uh, we're very diverse in that respect. And as I have my own law firm, uh, I'm able to pick and choose and kind of uh, pick the clients that I like. That's wonderful. How is an attorney based here locally can go about and get clients overseas? Uh, again, it's kind of back to that work ethic. You have to put in the time, the effort, the money, and, and build the relationships. And you can't expect necessarily to walk into a room one day and, and sign up 10 clients. It normally doesn't happen that way. Uh, I'm meeting with a client uh, this afternoon that was re referred to me by an existing client, and that's how we get much of our businesses through referrals of existing clients, which you know, we're very appreciative of. And so it takes a lot of time uh, and a lot of effort, but it pays off in the end. Absolutely, but you're based uh, here in Georgia. In other words, you couldn't uh, do a case in, in Denmark, for instance, or you're able to do that as well? No, actually I couldn't because uh, in, in Denmark, just like the U.S., you would have to be licensed there. Absolutely. Now, if I needed something done in Denmark, I have a lot of attorneys that I, I know over there and on LinkedIn with some of That's them. That's the secret. Because <laughs> I've met them over there and we work together on things. Uh, but uh, each state has a specific licensing requirement. Now, some immigration attorneys don't have a state licensing requirement but uh, because it's a federal matter but most attorneys uh, have a state licensing requirement but you build bridges and you have allies all over the place and I was talking to a friend in Indianapolis the other day uh, on a case assisting us up there one in Florida last week so there are ways to get things done uh, with get by with a little help with your friends as they say well excellent and I know that you probably promote uh, Georgia as much as you promote uh, Denmark here, and, yes. and you are the best representation of the uh, government of Denmark here in our state. Thank you. I know that. Um, so, uh, but you do an excellent job representing Georgia as well, and, and that's the, the reason why I'm asking you about uh, international trade with Georgia. Uh, please tell us how your profession interacts with the consular uh, uh, job and, and the role they have there. Sure. Well, I think it's a natural because uh, a consul's duties, there are many, but one of them, for example, is issuing passports. That's something that we do for Danish citizens here. Or if a Danish citizen is in need of uh, traveling abroad here, uh, you, you know, you have a situation that comes up. Lawyers are problem solvers. That's what we do. So it's not alien for us to say, hey, somebody's in a tight, somebody's in an emergency situation. Uh, you need to come in there like the cavalry and, and try to get something done for them. And I think being an attorney is a very good thing for that because, you know, Georgia's a big place. We're the largest state east of the Mississippi. And I went to the University of Georgia undergraduate, and I went to Mercer Law School, so I've got friends in all parts of the state. That's why oftentimes uh, people wonder why an American is representing another country. And the reason is uh, Denmark and all the other countries, they like to have people that are from the area that know who to call in Columbus if they have a problem or Savannah or Dalton or Dahlonega or wherever it may be. Right. So that, that, that it kind of goes, meshes in with what we do for a living anyway because we're problem solvers. Right, it makes sense. Um, I, I know you have received many honors and recognitions 
please tell us why a uh, prestigious book recently published in Holland uh, recognized you among uh, prime ministers, diplomats, and ambassadors from different countries. Well, it's back to relationships. I knew the right guy. But uh, fortunately, this book that's been published, it's uh, Consular Affairs and Diplomacy. Uh, Brill, B-R-I-L-L, -L, is the publishing company. It can be bought online, and it's going to be used mainly in uh, graduate schools, schools of diplomacy. I would like to ask you, what would it be your advice to young generations in how to get involved with this fascinating world of diplomacy and why it's so important for our countries to really have diplomats such as you representing foreign governments and in each uh, state, really? Uh, why it's so important not only for the relationships, political relationships, but also for the economy? The first thing I would advise a young person is to delve into the educational opportunities that they have. You know, know the countries of the globe, read up on it. Uh, the internet is a fantastic resource for that. Virtually every embassy now, if you go to the Danish webpage or, or one of the other web pages, is gonna have just bukus of information available that they can sit at their home and absorb that opportunities that my generation never had. Yeah. Uh, that's something they can do. They can get involved with the international cultural events here in Atlanta and other parts and learn about that. And then when they're going to college, they might want to consider a career at the State Department. That's extraordinary. I think that is an inspiration. I believe that you and many of the other 67 consuls here in Georgia are an inspiration for our community and for our younger generations. I would like to thank you so much for being on the show today, and I would like to have an open invitation for you to come back and give us great information as you provide today. Thank you so much, Consul. My pleasure, thank you. Thank you, we'll be right back. <music>